Welcome to Telluman Insights, where we reveal the hidden forces that shape the way you live and show you how to use them to create real transformation and supercharge your health, mindset, and daily life. Here are your hosts, Emma Greenwood and Nathan Sinclair. Welcome back to Telluman Insights. Um, today we're diving into the world of Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum a Mexican neuroscientist who really wasn't afraid to explore the fringes of consciousness research. Yeah, pushing those boundaries. It's fascinating how his work kind of sits right on that line between like hard science and some concepts that really push the limits of what we think we know about the brain, you know, and reality itself. Absolutely, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff uh, articles, research papers, excerpts from Grinberg's own writings. Oh, wow. And we're going to explore how his work really challenged a lot of those conventional ideas about, you know, the brain, consciousness, even reality. And maybe how it connects back to like our own experiences. Exactly. So let's start with his transfer to potential experiments. Okay. Now, Grinberg, he designed a very specific setup for these using Faraday cages. Right. Rooms that block electromagnetic fields. What's the big deal with that? Well, it's really important because it gets rid of any chance of the participants talking to each other in the normal way. So one person would be stimulated, say, with flashes of light, and the other person's brain activity was monitored using an EEG. And here's where it gets super interesting. Even though they're totally isolated in about a quarter of the pairs, the person who wasn't stimulated, their brain activity mirrored their partners. Wow. As if their brains were reacting in sync even though they were physically apart. Can you imagine? You're in one of these Faraday cages and your friend's in the other one and they're being stimulated and suddenly your brain's firing as if you're the one seeing the flashes of light. Right, even though you're not actually seeing anything. It really challenges the idea that our brains are just these separate units. It's mind-blowing. It really makes you wonder if there's a deeper connection between minds than we realize. Yeah, that we're only starting to understand. So this led Grinberg to propose his theory of a holographic non-local lattice. This idea that our minds are not just isolated organs, but interconnected nodes in a vast network. So is this lattice like some kind of telepathic highway? How did he actually explain this connection? Grinberg went beyond just telepathy. Okay. He called it synturgic theory. And it proposes that our brains interact with a neuronal field, kind of an energetic structure, to create how we experience reality. Hold on. Are you saying that what we see as reality is an objective, but a result of how our brains interact with this field? It's a pretty radical idea, but that's essentially what Grinberg was putting forward. He was challenging that idea that reality is fixed and outside of us, and instead saying it's actively constructed based on this interplay between our brains and this neuronal field. Wow, that shifts things. But if this neuronal field shapes our reality, what exactly is it? It sounds kind of mystical. And that's where Grinberg's exploration of shamanism, especially his work with Doña Pachita, comes in. Right, the Mexican healer. He was really interested in how shamans seem to interact with reality in a way that was way more fluid and changeable. I've heard of Doña Pachita. Wasn't she known for doing these amazing healings and surgeries, like bending reality to her will? Mm. Did Grinberg try to explain what she did through this synturgic theory? He did. He actually worked as Pachita's assistant. So he saw all this crazy stuff firsthand. Wow. He wrote it all down in his series, The Shamans of Mexico. And he believed that if Pachita's abilities were real, they were a demonstration of mastering the manipulation of this neuronal field, this lattice, to get those results. So she was like a master of navigating this hidden dimension of reality. Yeah. It makes you wonder what we could do if we learn to consciously interact with this neuronal field ourselves. Exactly. But what's really fascinating is that Grinberg didn't just accept these experiences without question. Right. He kept his scientific mindset and used what he saw to refine his theories about consciousness. It's like he was walking a tightrope between science and mysticism, trying to create a system that could include both. Absolutely. Yeah. He even suggested that consciousness itself may not be bound by space and time. Whoa. That it interacts with this neuronal field, which he thought was non-local, meaning it isn't limited by distance in the normal way. Wait, are we talking about a reality where telepathy and precognition are actually possible? If consciousness isn't restricted by space and time, right. 
it really changes what we think is possible. It does. Right. If we imagine this neuronal field as this non-local interconnected web and consciousness existing outside of space and time, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities, things that traditional science has often struggled to explain. Okay, my head's spinning. So interconnected minds, a reality-shaping field, consciousness potentially existing outside of space and time, this is heavy stuff. And it gets even more interesting when we look at how Grinberg's ideas might connect to some of the most mind-bending concepts in quantum physics. Quantum physics, now you're speaking my language. I'm hooked. Tell me more. Well, think about the idea of entanglement in quantum physics, where two particles, even separated by vast distances, are linked, and what happens to one instantly affects the other. Right. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. It's like they're communicating faster than the speed of light. Exactly. And Grinberg saw a connection between that and his concept of the holographic lattice. Oh, wow. If our minds are really interconnected in this non-local field, could they act in similar ways to those entangled particles? Could our thoughts and emotions ripple through this lattice affecting others in ways we don't yet fully grasp? That's an incredible thought. It's like <sighs> we're all swimming in this sea of consciousness, constantly influencing and being influenced by each other. This is blowing my mind. And we've only just scratched the surface. Grinberg's work takes us down some really interesting rabbit holes. Right. Let's delve deeper into his exploration of consciousness and how he believed we could tap into this potential within ourselves. I'm all in. This is why I love these deep dives. Yeah. They really make you question everything you thought you knew about reality and your place in it. And the story gets even more interesting when we consider Grinberg's own personal journey into consciousness and then his mysterious disappearance. Right. We'll unravel those layers in the next part of our exploration. I can't wait. Join us for part two as we continue to explore the enigma of Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum right here on Tia Lumen Insights. See you there. Welcome back to Teal Lumen Insights. We're still exploring Jacobo Grinberg, this neuroscientist who really dove deep into consciousness. Yeah, and his research was really groundbreaking, like the transfer of potential experiments to his work with shamans. Right. It's truly revolutionary stuff, but, you know, it makes you wonder, was he like a lone wolf in the scientific community? Or were there others exploring similar ideas? Grinberg was definitely ahead of his time, and a lot of his work faced skepticism, especially from the more traditional scientists. Yeah, they like things to be measurable and easily explainable. Exactly. But there were others out there, like, venturing into similar territory, Private. like researchers like Fred Allen Wolf and Charles Tart. Okay. They were also looking into the idea of non-locality and consciousness. So they were looking at how consciousness might work beyond the normal boundaries of space and time. Were they actually doing experiments or was it mostly theory? Oh, they were doing experiments. Oh, wow. Charles Tart, for instance, he studied how people separated by distance, you know, would react to stimuli. And he found that even when they were totally isolated, the receiver often showed responses that mirrored the sender's experience. So if, if one person was experiencing something, the other person would react as if they were experiencing it too, even if they were miles apart. Exactly. That's the idea. It suggests a connection between them that goes beyond physical distance. And then there's Marilyn Schlitz, who, with her colleague William Broad, did studies on the power of intention. Intention, like the power of thought to influence things. Exactly. They found that people could actually affect other people's physiological responses just using their minds, even from a distance. Wow. It's as if intention itself can actually shape the world around us. Wow. If that's true. That really opens up a whole new understanding of how we're connected and how our thoughts could have a real impact on the world. But thinking about non-local consciousness, you know, it raises the big question, what does it all mean? Like, does it have any real-world implications? Grinberg thought these findings had big implications for how we understand ourselves and the universe. For one thing, it challenges the materialistic view that a lot of science focuses on. Yeah. Because if consciousness is truly non-local, it means there's more to reality than just the physical stuff. So we're not just these biological machines. There's a deeper part of us. Exactly. It points to us being part of something way bigger, something interconnected, and maybe even spiritual. That's a pretty mind-blowing concept. Yeah. But are there any, like, practical applications for this knowledge? Could we use it to improve our lives or solve problems? That's where things get really exciting. Grinberg believed that if we could just understand and harness the power of non-local consciousness, we could achieve amazing things. Like what? Give me an example. 
Imagine healing someone from far away just using your intention or communicating telepathically with loved ones no matter how far apart you are. Wow. These are just a few of the possibilities. That would be amazing. But is there any real evidence that stuff like that is actually possible? There's a growing amount of research that suggests it might be. For example, studies on distant healing have shown some promising results, though we definitely need more research. I'd love to dive into that research. But before we do, I keep thinking about Grinberg's disappearance. Right. Do you think his work played a role in him vanishing? It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. It's still a mystery how he disappeared, but it's definitely possible that his research, which went into some sensitive and maybe controversial areas, could have attracted some unwanted attention. Are we talking government conspiracies or something even weirder? Who knows? There are so many possibilities. But one thing is for sure, Grinberg's work touched on something profound that challenged the accepted norms and maybe even threatened those who wanted to keep certain knowledge hidden. It's like he was a modern day Galileo, going against the grain with his radical ideas and being punished for it. Maybe. But just like Galileo's ideas changed how we see the universe, Grinberg's work might someday transform our understanding of consciousness. His legacy is both inspiring and a little bit unnerving. He was a real pioneer going into the unknown, and his disappearance just adds to the mystery. Absolutely. Yeah. And even though he's gone, his work continues. So how do we pick up the torch and carry on his exploration? That's the challenge, isn't it? Grinberg's work was so vast and had so many facets, it's tough to know where to even start. Yeah. It's like he left us with a massive puzzle to solve, with pieces scattered across science, mysticism, and personal experience. So how do we start putting those pieces together? I think the first step is to adopt Grinberg's spirit of fearless exploration. Okay. Be willing to question everything, look at different points of view, and embrace the unknown. That's good advice for life in general. Yeah. But how do we apply that specifically to studying consciousness? Well, we need to be willing to go beyond the limits of traditional scientific methods. Grinberg showed us that real scientific breakthroughs need more than just intellect. You need courage, intuition, and a willingness to accept the mysteries of consciousness. It's not just about collecting data, it's about the journey, the willingness to follow wherever the path leads. And that path may lead to places we never imagined, places where the lines between science and spirituality get blurry and the true nature of reality starts to reveal itself. Exactly. So are you ready to venture further into these uncharted territories of consciousness? Absolutely. Let's keep diving into Grinberg's world and see where it takes us. Excellent. In the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore some of the most fascinating and controversial aspects of Grinberg's work, like his research into altered states of consciousness and his encounters with the extraordinary subventional. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Teal Lumen Insights. It's been quite the journey so far exploring Dr. Ricoba Grinberg, this neuroscientist who dared to go beyond what's considered normal. His work really shows the power of just being curious and the importance of pushing those limits of what we think is possible. Totally. We've talked about his experiments, his theories about minds being connected, and his exploration of shamanism. But what was it all for? Like, what was Grinberg's ultimate goal? I think at the core of it all, Grinberg really wanted to understand consciousness. Like, he wasn't satisfied just studying how the brain works. He wanted to figure out the experience itself. Yeah. You know, what it means to be aware, to perceive, to exist. So it sounds like more than just science for him. Was it almost like a spiritual quest? Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Grinberg didn't really see a separation between science and spirituality. He thought they were both trying to get at the same truth about reality just from different angles. And he saw consciousness as the key to unlocking that understanding. Exactly. He believed that consciousness isn't just a side effect of the brain, but a fundamental part of the universe, maybe even the basis of reality itself. Hmm. He often talked about the observer with a capital O, suggesting that consciousness isn't just watching. It's actively involved in shaping reality. That's a powerful idea. Right. But if consciousness is so fundamental, why are we so limited in how we experience it? Right. If we're all connected through this non-local lattice and consciousness is beyond space and time, why can't we all access these amazing abilities like Donya Pachita? Why are we stuck in this limited version of reality? That's what really fascinated Grinberg. 
Yeah. He thought our everyday consciousness is just a tiny part of a much bigger spectrum. Like we're operating on a narrow bandwidth limited by our beliefs, our conditioning, and even the physical structure of our brains. So we're like radios tuned to one station, but there's this whole universe of frequencies out there we could be listening to. Exactly. And Grinberg believed that practices like meditation, shamanic rituals, even certain technologies could help us expand that bandwidth and tap into those hidden frequencies of consciousness. He saw them as tools for exploring deeper dimensions of reality. So in a way, he was saying we can hack into the system of reality and unlock hidden potential. Yeah, you could say that. He believed that we have the potential to go beyond our everyday awareness and tap into this huge source of non-local consciousness. It's exciting and kind of scary to think about what we could do. But if Grinberg was right, if we really can reach these deeper levels of consciousness, what does that mean for the future? That's the big question, isn't it? Grinberg left behind a legacy of fearless exploration, pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible. He really made us reconsider our place in the universe and what reality really is. Definitely. And even though he's not here anymore, his work continues to inspire people to explore consciousness. So for those of us who want to follow in his footsteps, where do we start? How do we begin our own exploration of consciousness? I think it starts with curiosity and being open to questioning everything. Don't be afraid to challenge what you think you know and explore different ideas, even if they seem unusual. It's about being open to the unknown, that feeling of wonder and possibility. Exactly. Grinberg's life and work show us that true scientific discovery needs more than just smarts. It takes courage, intuition, and a willingness to embrace the mysteries of consciousness. It's about the journey itself, being willing to follow wherever it leads. Precisely. And who knows what amazing things we might find along the way. Maybe we'll discover those hidden frequencies, those deeper levels of consciousness that Grinberg spent his life searching for. Thanks for joining us on this Tealumen Insights deep dive into the incredible world of Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing those boundaries of what you think is possible.